Okay, what's up there, YouTube? This is J-Man Time, and today I have a video on American submarines of the American Civil War, or submarine projects of the American Civil War. Now, a lot of you say you want more videos with narrations, so I'm gonna try to make as many as I can, and as fast as I can, but to make them more as interesting than I normally do. So this, for this video, I'm going to do a video on American Civil War submarines. Now, during the American Civil War, submarines were pretty much a new form of naval weapon and naval warfare at the time. Submarines during the American Civil War were almost all crank-powered submarines, meaning they did not have a standard diesel or even a steam-powered engine. They were all cranked by hand cranks, and they usually required more than a handful of crew members to crank the submarine or to move this submarine along. Now, unlike submarines from World War I or II, submarines during the American Civil War did not use traditional torpedoes, but used a 19th century weapon known as a spar torpedo. A spar torpedo is basically a, uh, I guess you can call it a mine on a stick, you know. It's kind of like a naval mine on a stick or a pole. Now, these poles were sometimes called lances, and they were at least 22 to 40 feet long, and the spar torpedoes were usually made out of copper or iron as those were more water resistant than wood at the time. These spar torpedoes could have warheads that weighed anywhere from 25 uppers to about 140 pounds. In order to detonate a spar torpedo, the submarine actually had to ram the warship with the lance fitted with a spar torpedo. Now, at the end of these spar torpedoes were either a spear or some type of device that would usually um, stab or jab itself within the side of these ships. The submarine would then have to reverse in order to trigger the spar torpedoes uh, triggered, which was a manual trigger usually. But during the Civil War, both the Union and Confederate navies later on developed electrically detonated spar torpedoes, you know. So, spar torpedoes were pretty much the main weapons for submarines during the American Civil War. Another weapon that American Civil War era submarines used were limpet mines. Now, limpet mines were either sticky or magnetic mines that were placed to the sides of warships and then detonated either with a switch or with a pulley switch. Either they were either electronically detonated or they had to be lit in some cases. So limpet mines were basically a primitive form of weapon, actually even more primitive than the spar torpedo, and they were usually placed by actual crew members rather than the submarine itself. So during the American Civil War, both the Union and Confederate navies had to rely on an early form of frogmen, very similar to the frogmen you would see during the Second World War. For example, the Italian frogmen, which were so famous during World War II for sinking Allied ships using limpet mines also, or British of uh, frogmen which used X-craft to sink Axis ships using magnetic limpet mines also. So pretty much you had that but in the American Civil War. So take those World War II style frogmen but put them in the American Civil War and you basically get the gist of what I'm saying. So that's a general overview of how submarines were during the American Civil War. So let's actually go over some of the submarines that were designed during the American Civil War. So we're going to start with the Union Navy first. And the first submarine to be adopted by the Union Navy was the USS Alligator from 1862. The USS Alligator was a hand crank powered submarine that was actually designed in 1861, but was not completed until 1862. She had a displacement of 275 tons which makes her pretty much the largest submarine of the American Civil War as all the other submarines on this list were much smaller. Her main armament were two limpet mines. She carried two 25 pound limpet mines that had to be manually placed on the sides of enemy warships by the crew of the USS Alligator. So the crew would actually have to exit the vessel in order to place these limpet mines on enemy warships. And this had to be done at night. You cannot do this in the daytime. Uh, this submarine had no armor, but she is made completely out of thick iron so you know that thick iron is basically armor keep in mind most cannons during the american civil war they weren't strong enough to punch through iron you know and i'm pretty sure you've seen movies or documentaries about ironclad ships these ironclad ships were fitted with muscle loading, muscle -loading can cannons but these cannons were nowhere near strong enough to punch through the thick iron that was actually put on these warships so submarines like the uss alligator would have been deployed mostly against 
ironclads, wooden ships, or partial ironclad ships, which are ironclad ships that are actually wooden ships covered in iron instead of ships that are made either completely out of iron or covered completely in iron. So those are the kind of ships that the USS Alligator would most likely be deployed against. Now, limpet mines actually can work against uh, ironclad vessels. You know, limpet mines are basically like, you know, they're kind of like anti-tank mines, but you stake them on the sides of ships, you know, except they don't have a shape charge. You know, these were Civil War era um, limpet mines had no shape charge, but they, since they were placed directly against the hull, you know, they could easily blow a hole in the side of an ironclad ship. USS Alligator had an endurance or an endurance of 10 hours meaning she could stay out to sea for 10 hours she had a maximum diving depth of 16 feet uh, which is pretty shallow for a submarine but keep in mind in the american civil war submarines were not used like we would use them now or even during world war one or two you know so submarines having an endurance of 10 hours and only being able to dive 16 feet that's not really a problem in the 1860s you know, the USS Alligator had a speed of four knots or 7.5 kilometers per hour or six um, point or 4.6 miles per hour. And she had a crew of 24 maximum. So she had the most crew members of any submarine of the American Civil War. Now, strangely enough, when the USS Alligator was first launched, she was not actually a crank powered um, submarine. She actually had eight oarsmen, you know, oarsmen of the, the USS Alligator was actually propelled by oars, you know, oars that were mounted in sort of a, you know, kind of like a, uh, what would you call it on a tank, you know, kind of like a ball mount. You know, you know how on tanks they have the ball mount with the machine gun? You know, see the USS Alligator had oars mounted in a similar fashion to how you would have machine guns mounted in a ball mount, you know, on a tank or armored fighting vehicle. But except you had this on a submarine and these oars were used to propel the submarine. But the Union Navy realized like, you know, this looked kind of stupid. So, you know, why don't we change the way this ship is propelled? So later on in the same year, 1862, they replaced all of the oars with a single hand crank powered engine you know it wasn't a true engine because it wasn't a petrol or coal power engine it was crank powered you know it's kind of like a tinker toy you know the kind you wind up and you crank it you know it was like that but on a submarine it required the sun the submarine had to be constantly cranked so the uss alligator had two crew men had two separate teams of crankers you know you know two on each side of the submarine when one's crew got tired of cranking the next crew would start cranking and that was basically how the USS Alligator was propelled. Now, sadly, the USS Alligator didn't last very long. During her first test run in 1863, which is about almost a year after she was um, completed, she was actually lost in a storm. You know, she was lost in a storm and is still lost to this very day. She had to be towed. She was being towed to one of her targets in the dead of night during a, I would guess a hurricane or a monsoon. And the ship that was towing her had to cut her loose because she was dragging it down. But luckily she didn't have any crew members on board. So when the USS Alligator was lost at sea, she pretty much sank with no casualties. And to this very day, the US Navy, along with other uh, archaeologists or marine archaeologists are actually still trying to find the USS Alligator. So hopefully the USS Alligator is found sometime in the future, but that basically ends it for the Alligator. Which brings us to our next submarine. The next Union submarine that was designed during the American Civil War is the USS Intelligent Whale, which was designed in 1863. Now, while the Alligator was the largest submarine designed by the Union Navy during the American Civil War, I guess you could say the USS USS Intelligent Whale was the second uh, most advanced submarine designed by the Union Navy. USS Intelligent Whale was a 4,000 pound or 1,800 kilogram submarine that was designed in 1863. She was actually designed uh, by a man named August Price. Uh, in 1863, Mr. August Price designed the alligator along with his partner Cornelius um, Scrotton Bushnell. 
you know. Uh, the ship had a hand crank propulsion system, just like the USS Alligator. She had a speed of four knots or 4.6 miles per hour. Uh, she had an endurance of 10 hours and she had a crew of six to 13 men. Um, Unlike the USS Alligator, the USS Intelligent Will was pretty small when compared to the Alligator. Um, her crew was only about half that of the Alligator's. Um, she had no armament when she was completed, you know. Her main armament would have most likely been a spar torpedo and limpet mines, just like the, you know, Alligator had limpet mines, and just like other submarines during the war would use spar torpedoes, for example. You know, for example, the Confederate submarine Harold Hunley. Keep in mind, both the Union and the Confederate Navy pretty much had the same ideas when it came to submarines. They were meant to be used as stealth attack weapons, you know. You know, they, were, they were not going to be used in the daytime to attack enemy warships, you know. So the USS Intelligent Whale was designed in 1863. In 1864, she was actually given to a organization known as the American Submarine Company, you know, which was uh, which had a huge investment in both August Price and Cornelius Bushnell. Um, she was meant to be given to the U.S. Navy during the war, but unfortunately that never happened. In fact, the U.S. Navy didn't really get their hands on the USS Intelligent Will until after the American Civil War. At that point, the Union Navy had no use for the Intelligent Will. I mean, she was a pretty advanced submarine for her era, but after the American Civil War, the Union Army, or the pretty much the American military or the American Navy, had no use for any new military warships because they had they really didn't have any enemies after 1865 you know not until the spanish american war did the u.s have any real enemies so in 1869 the uss intelligent whale was actually sold to a man named george m robertson who worked for the u.s navy department you know he he, he sold he had the submarine tested in order to see how it performed, but he really didn't have any goals for the submarine. So later on in 1872, this is like three years later, she was tested again by the U.S. Navy Department, but the U.S. Navy Department viewed the USS Intelligent Whale as pretty much a Civil War era relic, and by the 1870s, she was pretty much outdated. So the project was basically abandoned. She was actually kept in a warehouse by some guy named John Philip Holland for a number of decades. And then later on, she was passed around um, to various organizations. She was given to the Washington Naval Yard, you know, eventually. For to 2007, she was finally given to the National Guard's Militia Museum in New Jersey, where she pretty much sit, has been sitting for the last 11 years. So the USS Intelligent Will had a pretty uneventful career when compared to the USS Alligator. Submarine Explorer from 1863. The Submarine Explorer was a Civil War era experimental test bed submarine that was actually designed for the Union Navy. Or, you know, this submarine was actually designed for potential use in the Union Navy. Designed between 1863 and 1865, the Submarine Explorer was meant to be the world's first submarine to have a high pressure chamber. It was also supposed to be the first submarine to use compressed air, which would be a first in the 1860s. The Submarine Explorer was actually designed by a man named Julius H. Coral and his partner Ariel Patterson between 1863 and 1865. The submarine wasn't actually finished until about 1865-1866 after the American Civil War had already ended. The submarine had a displacement of 80 tons. Keep in mind, most submarines in the American Civil War did not weigh 80 tons. In fact, the only submarine that weighed more than 30 to 40 tons was the USS Alligator, which was the first true American submarine to be used in combat. Now, the USS Turtle from the American Revolution is the first American submarine, but the USS Alligator was the first submarine to be adopted by the US Navy. And the submarine explorer was meant to be a potential replacement since the Alligator was lost in 1862 63. 
the, the submarine explorer had a length of 12 meters or 39.4 feet. She had a propulsion. She was a crank powered submarine, just like most other Civil War era submarines. The ship had a speed of four knots or 7.4 kilometers per hour or 4.6 miles per hour. And she had a crew of between three and six. Now keep in mind the submarine explorer is another Civil War era hand crank powered submarine. Now as I mentioned earlier this submarine was the first submarine to use a compressed air chamber. She was the first submarine to have a compressed air chamber which was actually uh, managed by a secondary vessel that towed, that was being towed behind the submarine explorer. This secondary vessel used steam in the form of a pump. To create compressed air within the submarine so you, i guess you could say the submarine explorer was the first submarine to have to have compressed air within it you know or to be a you know this submarine was actually created in order to counter what we now know as decompression sickness which was something that was experienced by submarine crews during the american civil war you know, for example, the crews of the USS Alligator and even the crews of Confederate submarines like the H.L. Hunley and the Pioneer, the Pioneer being a prototype submarine that was designed by the CSA. Unfortunately for the, the submarine explorer, the Civil War had already come to an end by the time she had been acquired by the Union Navy in 1866. So she was disassembled and transferred to Panama, Panama being a region where the U.S. had its Navy based also. So the submarine explorer had been sent to Panama to harvest oysters and pearls in the Pearl Islands, the Pearl Islands being a chain of islands that actually exist off the coast of Panama. And then there, she pretty much stayed as a pearl and oyster harvester from 1866 until 1869. In 1867, her inventor had actually died of decompression sickness. Uh, at the time, it was believed that he had died from a fever, but post 1860s investigation found that he actually died from decompression sickness. In 1869, the submarine explorer was basically abandoned. It was abandoned on the island of San Tomo in the Pearl Islands, which is one of the many islands that exist off the coast of Panama, where she still sits to this very day. Now, this is the sadder part of the video. The Today, as of 2018-2019, the submarine explorer is slowly rusting away. Now, the submarine was actually located uh, during the Second World War, but was lost again. But in 2001, she was located for a second time uh, by a archaeologist by the name of James P. Delgado, Delgado for the Institute of Nautical Archaeology. And from 2002 until now, 2018-2019, they have been studying the wreck in order to see if she can still be salvaged. But unfortunately, no one has come up with the money to salvage the submarine explorer. So as of 2018, 2019, the submarine explorer is slowly collapsing. She is collapsing in slow motion. Just like most iron warships or iron submarines from the Civil War era that are still out there abandoned either on the beaches or abandoned underwater. The submarine explorer is actually sitting in the shallows. And in fact, throughout the daytime, the tides are so low that you can actually walk around and walk inside the vessel. So the vessel, it can actually be salvaged by anyone. But it seems like no one really wants to salvage the submarine explorer. Now, I've looked at photographs of the submarine explorer from 2018 till this month of December at the time of this video. And it seems that the submarine explorer's either her bow or stern section has almost completely collapsed. Keep in mind, she is made out of iron plates. In fact, she was one of the first uh, warships designed for the Union Navy to be completely made out of iron with the exception of the USS Alligator and the um, USS Intelligent Will, which were two other Civil War era submarines that were designed for the Union Navy. But keep in mind again, the submarine explorer was actually never used by the Union Navy during the war. She was not commissioned until a year afterwards in 1866. But sadly, as of the time of this video, the submarine explorer is slowly collapsing and sinking into the sand. Um, you know, she is still abandoned on San Tomo Islands, 
which is located in the Pearl Islands off the coast of Panama. A pretty sad end for one of the most advanced submarines that was designed during the American Civil War, but was not actually uh, commissioned until about a year afterwards in 1866. So what do you all think of the Submarine Explorer? I believe that the Submarine Explorer can be and should be salvaged before she completely collapses and rusts away. But unfortunately, like many other Civil War era ships that lie, uh, that lie abandoned, you know, throughout the U.S. or throughout the um, the islands off the coast of the U.S. in South America, and, you know, just like a lot of other ships in that era, she will most likely not be salvaged, you know. Okay. Now, that's basically it for all of the Union submarines. Now, keep in mind, during the American Civil War, the Union Navy didn't really focus on the submarines too much. They mostly focused on ironclad ships and then more specific ironclad monitor type warships. So, let's move on to the submarines of the Confederate Navy or the submarines of the CSA. Now, during the American Civil War, the Confederate Navy actually designed a variety of advanced and semi-stealth um, hand crank powered submarines during the war. And one of the first submarines to be designed, or the first submarine to truly be adopted by the Confederate Navy, was the H.L. Hunley, also known as the CSS H.L. Hunley. The H.L. Hunley was a hand crank powered submarine from 1863. She was actually designed by a man named John McClintock, McClintock or McClintock, you know, in early 1863. She was a 7.5 ton submarine with a length of 40 feet. Um, her displacement, as I stated, was 7.5 short tons or 6.8 metric tons. Uh, she was a hand crank powered submarine, obviously, and she was cranked by at least four to five men. Her speed was four knots or 7.4 kilometers per hour or 6.5 miles per hour. She had a crew of eight men and her main armament was one spar torpedo fitted with a copper cylinder warhead containing a 135 pound or one or 61 kilograms of black gun power powder this spar torpedo was detonated electrically speaking with an early form of electric detonator or it could be de detonated uh, manually by simply pulling the submarine in reverse triggering the spar torpedo's secondary detonation switch basically an early form of a lighter that would set the gunpowder off when the switch cord was pulled back too far, you know, drawing the submarine's reverse. Um, the H.L. Hunley was basically the first Confederate submarine to enter service, you know, but she was also a pretty strange submarine. Unlike the USS Alligator, which could actually dive to attack its opponents by um, using limpet mines, the H.L. Hunley, in order to attack enemy warships, the H.L. Hunley had to pretty much stay on the surface, you know. She had to ram her spar into the side of an enemy vessel and either detonate the spar torpedo uh, electronically, you know, with an electric detonator, or detonate it via the secondary mechanism, which involved the submarine being put into reverse and triggering the secondary switch by pulling it you know the H.L. Hunley is most famously known for sinking the American sloop of war the USS Housatonic on the uh, night of February the 17th 1864 now the USS Housatonic was a sloop of war you know which is basically like an early form of a it was pretty much just a gunboat really sloops of war were usually used to block the entrance to a harbor or naval base now the USS Housatonic was a 1240 ton um, sloop of war so she was not to be messed with by any uh, regular old confederate warship with the exception of the confederate ironclad ships but the confederates by 1864 could not risk any major battles with the Union Navy at this point. So the H.L. Hunley was used to sink the USS Housatonic. But during the attack on the USS Housatonic, the H.L. Hunley's spar torpedo was simply too powerful. In fact, when the spar torpedo was detonated, which the, uh, the H.L. Hunley actually detonated the spar torpedo at a distance of about 
at 40 feet, you know, about 20 to 40 feet, which seems like a good distance to detonate a spark torpedo. But this was a 135 pound high explosive, you know, spark torpedo. And when the spark torpedo was detonated, the shock wave was so strong that it actually damaged the HL Hundley, causing her to sink. In the year 1995, the H.L. Hundley was actually raised, you know, between 1995 and the year 2000, the H.L. Hundley was actually raised from the bottom of Mobile Bay. H.L. Hundley, the H.L. Hundley is still, you know, being treated for rust, but during the salvage of the H.L. Hundley, it was actually discovered that most of the crew were actually killed by the shockwave from the H.L. Hundley spar torpedo. So the spar torpedo was simply too powerful. And not only was the crew killed, but the submarine was actually damaged. There were several holes or, you know, several um, giant shrapnel holes found in the submarine, which is most likely why she sank, you know. And some of our crew members were most likely killed by the concussion from the explosion. Keep in mind, they were inside a submarine and this submarine was not compressed like most modern submarines are. So they were basically killed. Uh, the ones who were killed basically died either instantaneously or later on from the shockwave reverberating within the submarine, which the submarine was not properly compressed. So these sailors were already suffering from an early form of decompression sickness. In the case of the, in the, case of the H.L. Hundley, she detonated her spar torpedo only to be, you know, sunk by its shockwave, by the shockwave of her own spar torpedo. Now, the USS Housatonic also sank, but the H.L. Hundley was also sunk too by her own spar torpedo. And that basically ends the story of the H.L. Hundley, which was the first Confederate submarine, uh, the first true Confederate submarine to enter service. Now, later on, in 1863, before the Hundley went onto her mission, before the Hundley was actually sunk, the Confederates actually came up with a improved design or an improved version of the HL Hundley known as the American Diver, uh, which was a fusion of the HL Hundley's design mixed with the a, another submarine that was designed by the Confederate um, Navy. And that secondary submarine is actually my favorite Confederate submarine known as the Pioneer or the CSS Pioneer. Now the Pioneer was a hand cranked powered submarine. Now the Pioneer was a better looking submarine, I might say, um, than the than the um, HL Hundley. Like the HL Hundley is a cool looking submarine. You know, I'll say that. But the Pioneer is a better looking submarine. Like when I think of 19th century submarines from the 1850s, 60s, or 70s, the Pioneer is what I would imagine. It's a sleek looking submarine. Now, the Pioneer was actually built or designed by three different men, um, Horace Hundley, James Mac. Um, Clint took the same man who designed the H.L. Hundley and a third man named Baxter Watson and she was actually designed before the H.L. Hundley. She was actually designed between 1861 and 1862. Now the Pioneer, like the H.L. Hundley, um, had a displacement of 7.5 tons or 6.8 metric tons. Um, she had a crew of eight and she had a speed of four point uh, four knots, or seven point four kilometers per hour, or six point uh, four point six miles per hour. Just like the H.L. Hundley, she was too was fitted with the same copper spar torpedo, fitted uh, filled with one hundred thirty pounds of black gunpowder. But unlike the H.L. Hundley, the Pioneer was never, never truly entered service. Like she entered service, but she never went on any combat missions. Um, the Pioneer entered service in 1862, in February 1862. But unlike the H.L. Hundley, which was used to attack the Union Navy out in the open oceans, the CSS Pioneer was meant to attack the Union Navy on the Mississippi River and later Lake uh, Pacha train, you know, which is um, in in the south, you know, it's it's at, at the mouth of the Mississippi River or one of the lakes that feeds the um, the Mississippi River feeds into. Now, the submarine Pioneer was actually actually entered service as a result of the Union Army and Navy advancing towards New Orleans. Now, during the advance 
on New Orleans, the Pioneer was actually abandoned, which I kind of think was stupid, but they abandoned the Pioneer by scuttling her and the, uh, and the Mississippi River. And later on, the Union Navy would discover the Pioneer after the American Civil War in 1868. In 1868, about 4.5 years after the end of the American Civil War, the Pioneer was actually found at the bottom of Lake Pontchartrain, you know, which was uh, pretty staggering for, from my perspective. Like, eh, whenever I see navies abandoning warships or armies ab abandoning tanks, especially advanced prototype weapons like the Pioneer, it always leaves me kind of dumbfounded. Like, why would you do that? You know? So the Confederates basically abandoned the Pioneer, and the Union Navy later found the Pioneer at the bottom of Lake Pontchartrain in 1868. Today, uh, sadly, however, um, after 1868, the Union Navy had no use for the wreck of the Pioneer or for the, you know, the raised uh, prototype submarine Pioneer. So the Pioneer was actually sold for scrap metal, which I think was absolutely stupid. Like why, you know, every time I read about advanced Civil War warships, they are always being sold for scrap metal. Like why didn't they preserve these vessels, you know? The Pioneer that we see today in the museums are not the real pioneer. You know, the real pioneer is gone. She's been scrapped a long time ago. But uh, photos and blueprints of the pioneer has been used to make at least one or two replicas of the pioneer. And so that basically ends the story of the pioneer, which was one of my favorite Confederate submarines. But for some idiotic reason, the Union Navy decided to scrap her um, sometime between 1868 and 1870. Which brings us to the next Confederate submarine. The next Confederate submarine is very similar to the USS Intelligent Whale, and as she is known as the CSS Bayou St. John. The Bayou St. John was a crank power submarine from 1862, which was the same year that the Pioneer was, uh, had, that the Pioneer had entered service. She had a displacement of 6.8 tons, just like the HL Hunley and the Pioneer. She was meant to be armed with one spar torpedo or one copper spar torpedo filled with a slightly smaller load of 90 pounds or 41 kilograms of black powder. The Confederates had learned, well they didn't learn yet because the Hunley hadn't been sunk yet, but the Confederates realized in 1862 that spar torpedoes might need a smaller warhead in order to make sure that the submarine was not damaged by its own weapons, something the Confederates would later fall back on for some reason in 1864 when the Hunley was still fitted with that 130 pound um, spar torpedo which accidentally sank her. But anywho, the St. John Bayou, the Bayou St. John had a range of 4.8 kilometers or 3 miles, which isn't bad for a hand crank powered submarine in the American Civil War. She had a maximum diving depth of 5 to 16 feet, and she had a speed of 4 knots and a crew of 8. Now, the Bayou St. John is like a smaller version of the USS Intelligent Whale. She's a pretty cool looking submarine, but unfortunately, she didn't see much action either during the American Civil War. Now, the Bayou St. John was actually built by a company known as Bayou St. John, which was located on Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans, Louisiana. And just like the CSS Pioneer, or the Pioneer, the Bayou St. John II was abandoned during the fall of New Orleans in 1862. So she too was scuttled just like the um, Confederate submarine, the other Confederate submarine Pioneer. Again, a stupid decision. I mean, yeah, she weighed, you know, 4.8 tons, but, you know, you can still try to at least keep your weapons close. You know, you don't want your advanced weapons falling into enemy hands. But anyway, she wasn't actually discovered though for over two decades. It wasn't until 1878 that the um, CSS Bayou St. John was actually found at the bottom of Lake Pontchartrain and she was later salvaged. But thankfully, thankfully, unlike the Pioneer, she was not sold for scrap metal. 
And during the 20th century, she was passed around from a variety of um, of conservation organizations and a bunch of military bases. Um, in 1908, she was moved to an area known as Camp Nicholas, which was a Confederate home and, um, on the Mall Street, where she was on display for many years. Then in 1942, she was acquired by the, the Louisiana State Museum, where she stayed there until about 1999. You know, and then in 1999, she was transferred to Baton Rouge, where she was kept, where she is still being kept today at the Capitol Park Museum in Baton Rouge. So there, you can actually find the CSS Bayou St. John. And she is literally the only Confederate submarine to actually survive the American Civil War, you know, intact. You know, she survived only because she was scuttled, you know, let's be realistic. But I still can't get over the fact that the Pioneer was actually scrapped. You know, when I first found out about the submarine, I was like, man, I can't wait to see, you know, some some detailed photos of the, the original Pioneer. So that basically ends it for submarines of the American Civil War. These were some of the most advanced naval weapons of the 1860s until the later 1860s and early 1870s. Um, in terms of submarine technology, they actually weren't the most advanced, you know. They were the most advanced American submarines, sure. All of these, both the Union and the Confederate submarines. But in the 1860s, the most advanced submarine was actually the French submarine Plunger, you know, from 1863. That was actually the most advanced submarine on the planet during the American Civil War. And there was also a Russian submarine designed in the last year of the American Civil War. And that submarine actually had the ability to fire rockets, to fire Congreve rockets. You know, Congreve rockets were those British, you know, anti-infantry rockets. And actually modified them to be an early form of anti-ship missile that was fired by a prototype uh, Russian submarine that was also designed in the 1860s. So even though these American submarines are advanced or were advanced for their time period, there were actually other submarines out there that were more advanced than the American submarines of the American Civil War. What do you think of these submarines of the American Civil War? If I had to pick one to be my favorite, I already stated that the Confederate Pioneer is my favorite overall submarine, but if I had to pick a Union Navy submarine, I would say the USS Intelligent Whale just because it looks so awkward when compared to the USS Alligator and the Submarine Explorer. So what are your thoughts on these submarines? Put them in the comment section below and until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.